Welcome back to uh, your own YouTube channel. My name is Kai Reinke and I'm very happy to see you again. Today I want to talk about mounting, pressing in, assembling our parts. I want to talk about slit bushes as well as dual bushes. See you. Okay, as I've said today, I want to talk about how to install our parts. Just to let you know, this video was made because of an input of a customer. He asked me, well, I've seen your videos, I like your videos, but I would be very interested in a video where you show us how to mount, how to assemble, how to fit your parts to our system. So and that's what I want to do today. Um, here we are in the, in the workshop. Where well, the engineers as well as the quality uh, people um, install our parts. When I'm saying the engineers, yes, the design engineers, uh, the development engineers, they also have to do that because they need to get a real feeling for the function and as well as the assembly of the parts. Because they are in front of the customer, they are visiting you at your facility and maybe you have a question regarding how to do this and to do that and if a design engineer, if the person have never mounted a part by himself, he would not be uh, really in a good position to answer. Okay. Um, we need to do that. We need a press. That is a workshop press. This is a very s slow running, slow moving press. That's why we, well, we don't have uh, significant s uh, safety devices here. We have, of course, here on this side, as well as on that side, in that booth, um, we have uh, many, many fitting rooms at different positions of the tolerance. That's important to, to do the assembly at the lower tolerance as well as the upper tolerance. Um, uh, vice versa, sorry. <laughs> um, why is it necessary to do these, the assembly in the, in the development phase? Well, to uh, properties we need to get, two numbers we need to get. Number one is we need to understand the, the level of input force you need to press in a slit bush because that's important for you to know as a customer. Second is we need to install the, the parts in a fitting room in order to measure the stiffness. That's that's very obvious. I mean uh, you need to, to need a, you need to, to use a original installation setup. And regarding the tolerances I've just talked, of course, to understand the really what the tolerance range could be in reality, we need to build, we need to assemble the parts in the lowest fitting room, so with the highest compression to the rubber, as well as vice versa, in the, in the largest fitting room with the lowest compression. That gives us the border of the tolerance range. Good. Here the press moves, as I've said, and we can see the manometer in the, in the back. Uh, that shows us uh, the pressure we need to, to reach a certain point in the press-in phase. And that's the number uh, given on the drawing for you to information. That's the push-in force, which is required. I want to start with putting, pushing in, pressing in the slit bushes. The diameter of a slit bush is, is much larger than the diameter of the fitting room where it's going to be installed. You will see that in the, in the detailed picture, uh, uh, scenery just in a moment. And we have to reduce the diameter very much. Depending on how much we have to reduce the diameter, we use um, a guidance which is e either conical or tubular, um, cylindrical. cylindrical. Um, as larger the compression is going to be, as more we recommend to use a conical uh, guidance. That's, um, that's increasing the move you have to do, the displacement, but it's decreasing the force you need. Of course, what we see here is a development setup of installation. I hope in real, in a mass production, you're going to have more efficient ways to do that. But the principle actually is the same. So, 
we need the, the guidance, the guide, and we need a stamp. It can't be for, for large corporations a uh, fixed stamp because otherwise you can't uh, get an, an overlap between the stamp and the outer tube of the slit bush. So we need to have different sizes of, of stamps. Um, you see that in the next section. But there are also an uh, uh, option for mass production to have kind of movable stamps, so, uh, which could reduce during the, the push-in phase, let's say, let's say, the diameter. So that's, um, that's what, what makes it more efficient. But okay, I believe uh, enough words are made, so let's have a deeper look on the details. Okay, now the colleague is putting the, the fitting room and the guidance under the press and now he's inserting the slit bush into the guidance. He is placing the stamp. We use a stamp with two different diameters and we have a flange in the middle. And now the press is going to push in the, the bush into the fitting room until the flange touches the guidance. And we start with the larger diameter of stamp uh, until it's becoming too large for the conical guidance. And he's turning the stamp in a minute using now the smaller diameter stamp. Um, the reason for that uh, I've just explained already. That's because a uh, too big diameter stamp will not pass fully the guidance and a small diameter stamp which not overlap with the outer tube during the whole push-in uh, process. Now you see that the pushing force is uh, slightly above 110 uh, bar, which is about 50 kilonewtons, and it's done. Well, the slit push is pushed in and it's cleaned again. And now I want to talk about installing dual bushes. This is not really a press in, but that's a closing process, a closing of, of the housing because of the two uh, half shelves, half shelves of the bush and uh, as well as the housing. Um, and again, the housing we need here for the installation is a little bit different compared to what you use in a series production because uh, we want to measure some more details as well. We want to measure the the, the clamping force which is required to close the, the housing okay and therefore we need to really work out when exactly is the point where the housing is just closed for that purpose we, we use this small movable uh, metal sheets which you see in the detail video in a second um, as long as these metal parts are just movable the, house, the, the uh, housing is not uh, completely closed, so we need to push it a little bit further. But by doing that, but it's, that's just a little bit uh, tricky and uh, we move on in very, very small steps. But of course, with the experience of the engineers, um, we, know exactly, uh, we, we know exactly how to do that and how to figure that out. And then we can, can get the, the um, clamping force. For a mass production, of course, normally you do not use a press to install a dual bush. But you have to tighten the four screws very, very well balanced in order to avoid any misalignment of, of the housing. Yeah? But that's enough about the theory. Let's go to the practice and see what's, what it really look like in reality. Okay, here you see the lower part of the housing and the colleague is installing the dual bush into the housing and you can see another adapter half shell uh, I will explain a little later. He's um, moving in the inner part for the dual bush um, and as a next step that's the upper part of the adapter. We use these adapters in order to use with, with uh, one fitting space fitting room many many different dual bushes you can see here on the left and the right of the of, of the dual bush to um poster to give the, the bug guidance to the 
upper part of the housing in order to make sure that it's very well balanced when it's getting closed. Uh, now he's, he's moving down the stamp of the, um, of the press. It's very slow. I've explained you already why. And of course, that's not a mass production process. During the stamp is now moving the, the upper part down. He keeps moving the, the movable um, pins until he can't move anymore. And that's the value of the pressure. You can see it is almost 300 bars. So that's the pressure you need to close the housing. And 300 bars is in kilonewts about, is about 110 kilonewts. That's the, the pretension force you need to consider for your screws. Now he's, he's, uh, the colleague is closing the screws. Of course, that's um, handmade style uh, and very convenient in that way. I believe in a mass production, you will close the housing by tightening the screws. Um, but you need to make sure that it's uh, very well uh, balanced, that the movement of the upper part of, of the housing is pretty much even and um, parallel. Otherwise, you can get some, some movements you don't want in the dual bush. Okay, he's tightening the screws. Um, that's under press a little more, well, hand craftsman's work to do. But if you only assemble one dual bush a day or so, something you can do. Okay, that should be the last one. Done. The dual bush is fitted. Now he's releasing the pressure to the force, uh, the pressure of the of, of of the press, and um, the dual bush is ready for measure. Okay, doc. So now we have seen how to to install, how to, how to mount, how to assemble a slit bush as well as a dual bush. If there's any question remaining, please don't hesitate to contact me. And I mean, I've said that. We've made this video today because of an input from a customer. So, as this person have contact, has contacted me directly, you can also do. If there's anything, any question open, if you want to ask me, please go a little more to these details or that. And, I mean, if you have other questions regarding our parts, please also contact me. I mean, you find all the contact data down in the contact box. Um, because we want to prepare a video where I will try to answer the questions you have. Okay. And of course, for that, I need questions. Um, otherwise, it would be a very boring video, I think. Uh, but that's really all for now. I don't want to finish without saying thank you again to, to Michael Schiebel for helping me doing the video. He's the man behind the camera. And that reminds me that we're still looking for a few more followers of our YouTube channel because he promised me as soon as I've reached 100 followers he will show up in front of the camera and say hello and um, so please follow us if you liked what you've seen if there's anything else contact us all the data are down in the box follow us like us leave us a like leave us a comment share this uh, this video and of course Switch on again when I'm saying hello to the YouTube channel of Jörn. Thank you very much. See you soon.